ready? Tis the season of fright, mischief, tricks, treats, and all that spooky crap. I'm gonna be real, I'm not a Halloween person. And to go further, I'm not really a fan of the horror genre in media at all. I do like some of the old classic movies like Dracula and The Mummy, but almost all of horror is pretty much a snooze fest for me. And when it comes to gaming, the Castlevania series have the only horror-related games I'm really into. But I'm gonna try something new and attempt to get into the Halloween spirit with this video. When it comes to arcade games, I barely know any horror-related games outside of the House of the Dead and Night Slashers. So I made an attempt to search for games that go bump in the night and stumbled upon one that is a genre I've not covered and I think will be fun to talk about. So turn off your lights, grab your favorite candy, and let's take a look at the 1989 rail shooter developed by SNK called Beast Busters. No one knows what happened. One sure thing, we'll risk our lives. That's all the demo screen provides, but in a nutshell, a city is being taken over by beasts, which are basically just zombies, and a bunch of sci-fi monster motherfuckers, and the heroes have to shoot down all the ghouls in their path and discover what exactly is going on. And speaking of heroes, let's have a look at our cast. We have Johnny Justice, who honestly looks like some baseball player from the past, Paul Patriot, where in my headcanon, he's the older brother of Jax from Mortal Kombat, because why the fuck not? And Sammy Stately, who looks like Axel Stone from Streets of Rage. These are pretty generic heroes, but holy shit, do they got some comic book-ass comic book names. Just to sidetrack for a minute, for those that don't know, I remember Stan Lee, the father of Marvel Comics, explained how they created names for their characters. He said they would purposely create names in which the first and last names start with the same letter. For example, Peter Parker, Bruce Banner, Stephen Strange, and so on. Stan explained that they made so many characters that using this method made it easier to remember their actual names. Now, I don't know if the heroes of Beastbusters were created with this in mind, but whenever I see character naming like this, I can't help but give a nod of approval as I'm totally fine with anything that reminds me of the great Stan Lee. Excelsior! The credits are inserted and we start our first stage, or section, as the game tells you with a robotic voice. Section 1. Beastbusters is a rail shooter, meaning the player is locked into a set path and shoots the fuck out of everything on screen, and it's just as simple as that. The game uses a machine gun, much like the Terminator 2 arcade machine, in fact, they are set up very similar. I'm playing the game on PC via Fightcade, so I just have to use the mouse, which I'll tell you right now is fucking easy mode. So let's keep that in mind as I discuss the gameplay. Aside from blasting undead fools, you can also collect sub-weapons, like napalm bombs or hand grenades, to help clear a screen when shit is getting too hairy. There are also pickups like health and bulletproof vests to keep you going without dying. As you can see, the gameplay is ridiculously simple, and without being at the actual cabinet playing it, a lot of the feel and immersion is kind of lost. But what made Beastbusters keep my attention is how awesome everything looks in the game. The sprite work is just badass, from the enemies in the foreground and background, to the stages and their segues. Everything has nice details and colors, especially for the gory effects when wasting a foe. Explosions from cars, boats, and trucks are bright and entertaining. It's all done very well, and I especially like when you die, and there's a little image of your character getting mauled by zombies. It's just a cool touch. Beastbusters offers an okay range of enemies, a lot of which are pretty much skins of one another, but I want to show some of my favorites, like Football Man being carried by Bird, Crazed Piranhas trying to eat your face, and the many clones of Dr. Manhattan trying to bust the cap. Like seriously, all these zombies are packing more heat than the fucking Punisher. Which city is this, Detroit? He's out of line, but he's right. One thing I want to point out is this game does kind of go overboard with the animal killing. There's so many parts where you're just blasting down zombie dogs or birds. I know they're not actual animals and they're undead, but it kind of made me sad every time I heard a dog shriek when I killed it. I honestly could have done without all that. 
But the best the game has to offer is save for the boss fights, which are my favorite part of the game. We got some masochistic members of the Blue Man group, weekend warrior zombos with rocket launchers attached to their bikes, this thing that looks like the fucking Golgothan. A what? A shit demon! A monster truck? No, seriously. It's legit a monster truck. And whatever the fuck this thing is. But my favorite boss is the floating eye made up of zombie body parts. This shit straight reminds me of Legion from the Castlevania games, which has always been my favorite boss from those games. And it's awesome to see this idea in some other video game. If anything, the boss fights make this game worth a playthrough. They're creative, kind of gross, and fun to fight against. The game even has a boss rush mode at the end. I love it when games do this, especially arcade games or side-scrolling action games like Mega Man. You get to experience the best the game has to offer again, and it's back to back. This game also offers something that is pretty rare for an arcade game. After you defeat all 500 phases of the last boss, I joke, but seriously, there are a lot of fucking phases on this last boss. Our heroes look over the city streets in victory, only to be met with a cliffhanger as a giant spaceship descends over the town. A pretty unsuspecting twist, I must say. Beastbusters was a pretty fun game to play, even though it was made really easy using a mouse. I found the graphics to be fantastic, and those boss fights to be just plain fun. Satisfying sound effects and just the right amount of gore to keep me entertained and wanting to keep going until the game is beat. Real shooters aren't really a thing anymore, but playing this game makes me want to dive into them more just to see what I missed or never knew about. And that's what's been the most fun about playing these arcade games. Before I end the video, I just want to say that I hope everyone has a safe and happy Halloween. Have you played Beastbusters? What did you think of it? Are there any other railgun shooters I should check out? Feel free to share your thoughts. Thank you for watching.